Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the StreamZ community call on 25th of July. And before uh, going through the agenda, is there anything someone would like to raise or discuss? Okay, it seems like not. So uh, the first point in the agenda is about uh, dropping support for Kubernetes version 1.23 and 1.24. And uh, we have a proposal here to add a warning in uh, 043, and then the support should be removed uh, in the 044. So what's what are the other thoughts? I think it makes sense from my point of view. Anyone against it or agrees with it? Fine by me. Sounds good to me. Okay, so let's move to the PRs and issues. Uh, today we have three of them. So uh, the first one is about uh, adding support of the additional volumes in the pod. Uh, from what I saw, there are approvals from, uh, from Tom, uh, Jakub and Paolo, and I guess it's, near to the finish if i'm I right so i had some yeah. comments there so i guess he needs to decide if he should proceed and merge it or so paulo what do you think yeah sorry guys let me double check uh, it was from yesterday, but of course, I have to remember what I commented there. Yeah, the comment was about uh, prefixing the methods with the class names. As we no, yeah, the... it's a, sorry, it's a, it's a kind of minor thing, but I think that across the, the code base, we usually don't import a static method from a class, but we try to use, you know, the class dot the call to the method in order to make clear where this method lives. So at least this is what I see across the code base. And uh, I think that it will be better to, to stay this way instead of importing static methods. So I'm, I'm waiting for the, for the author of the PR to come back to me. Okay, it's comment from yesterday, so I guess we can wait a day or two before pinging the user if it's the blocker for the merging the PR. Yeah, even because so so it's it's not mandatory as you can see. I I say the no need to change um, if the author will not apply the change even I don't know today or tomorrow. We can just merge it. So like this? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next one is from Maros. Uh, one more PR for the performance test, which is there for quite long time. 
and I had some comments around it that we should not maybe uh, have multiple configurations in the tests and we should somehow make it possible to configure the stuff we want to test during the execution of the system tests. And I don't know if Maros had time to incorporate the changes or I don't know if he's on the call, but it would be good to determine if he's- the I, I think he did. He reduced the timeout and he reduced the number of tests should be faster now, but I haven't tried in a while. To be honest, I'm not sure I follow the purpose of this PR. Like, system test is not the place to test the performance of the stuff beyond checking that it matches some limits. So this is this is more to test the scalability of the topic operator. Uh, this is something we discussed in a proposal and, and it was accepted. Yeah, but I don't understand the value of testing many different configurations, like pick up what's the scale you want to have and have a test that it reaches the scale. That's a so scalability test. This is not... some detailed testing on how different options influence the performance. It's not something what should be in system tests. So, so this is a little bit different from the tests you are mentioning. The, the, these are the tests that are already merged, but this one is just to test the scalability. So it's not testing uh, raw performance, just how the system scales. Um, uh, increasing the number of topic events up to 1,000 or whatever. Uh, so it's not that, that we are changing the configuration, it's the default configuration. Then you don't need to increase any events, you just create 1,000 topics and check that it works. Yeah, but we want to see, we want to see uh, giving some step, increased step, if no, there is any change. I really think the issue here is that the more complex you make it, the more useless it will be because it will not be used, it will not add any value, and then in six months we will have a PR to delete it. So there, there can be there can be different behaviors uh, with different size of batches. So that's the purpose of this test. Uh, but we don't care about the different size of batches. Why do we care about them? So the, the whole logic of the topic of data is based on batches of events. Uh, so for me, it's important to test. How many, how many topics do we want the topic operator to handle with default configuration? I don't know. Uh, that, that's something everyone needs to figure out, but we want to have good performance in general. So um... Yeah, but you don't test it as part of the system test. As part of the system test, what you can do is you can set some expectations. Oh, I like see. We expect that with the default configuration, the topic of, and with, I don't know, some resources like half gig of memory and one CPU, the topic operator can handle 1,000 topics, 10,000 topics, whatever the number we desire is. And then we set then we create some test which basically checks that whatever changes have been done, this limit is still maintained and we have still the desired scale. Yeah. The, yeah, it, yeah. It, it influence of the of the match batch, batch size or max batch linger on the performance. That's surely something what's useful to know, but what value does it have to test this as part of some system test pipeline? That's something what you can kind of test. Yes. From time to time to kind of tune the default configuration, for example, because you will see that with by increasing the batch size, you change the limit or something. But I'm not sure you really want to have this as part of the system test. Yeah, no, I fully agree on that. Uh, so this is something that should be run on, on demand. Uh, maybe we, are, um, as you said, also passing the number of batches that you want to test. 
uh, so with some parameters, uh, but not part of the regular system tests that we run. I, I agree with that. Uh, so it's, I think it's we, not about being part of the regular system test or not regular system test. It's about not being part of the code base. Okay. Like, once you say that something is not running the regular system test, that means that you are just starting the path to remove it in six months because you will find out that it doesn't work anymore for this and that reason, and and then you will sooner or later remove it. So we can, we can uh, run it with very small batch size, maybe just one, and then make it par uh, in in introduce the possibility to pass uh, more batches so to run on demand. What about this? But that's a different purpose. You, you don't uh, like the test for testing how the performance reacts to the batch size that doesn't need to be part of the system test code base. That's something you can do yourself. What you want as part of the code base is that you set some limit and you check that the limit is fulfilled. And, and that, that's what this test does. So you set some limit and, and then you check that it, it runs fine. It doesn't um, seem so based on the charts and based on the description. Yeah, initially we we introduced a lot of batches up to one thousand with fifty increase, uh, fifty events increase. Uh, but maybe that's too much. I agree. So we can we can uh, set a small number of tests and and run it. Uh, I don't know. I see, I see the value in having this kind of test, but I don't know what other people think. Yeah, I, I don't see it because I'm pretty sure that it will be removed in six months if it's merged. Like my point was to uh, reduce the number of, of the test cases because from what I saw, they were like at least yeah. Or at least the uh, the pipeline took like twenty two hours, which was uh, quite uh, long. And my yeah. idea was to have some kind of test where you will pass some arguments with the configuration you want to achieve, and just run the tests and see what what are the results or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that can be basically done manually as well. So it yeah. was my main main issue with with the PR that it takes a lot of time and uh, yeah, as I mentioned in the comment, I think that the only one who actually checks the the results is you during the work on the topic yeah. operator. Yeah, and I am not sure how many people will actually run the all of the tests and wait twenty two hours to see if there is some. Kind of. Yeah, so I, I fully agree with that. The, I think that that was the initial configuration. Uh, and with the constraint of our pipeline, it took so much time. Uh, but of course, we need to reduce it. We need to, to make it fast. And then um, in case of any big change, one can use this on demand to, to see if there is any big performance impact on, on these changes in case of big huge PR or maybe some even small PR but changing to some important code part. Uh, so you want to assess that performance is still good. I, I see value in, in all of this, but I agree that we need to make it fast and then maybe one can run locally with more more data and, and, and see what happens because look, if you run this locally it's faster, uh, it's, it's not that much time. Uh, I have it. Uh, I initially created a custom low test for this. I can still use it if you don't want it to be part of the code base, but I see the value in this. I mean, the the main problem here is also the thing to if it will be actually maintained in some way, because we had this test there. And uh, yeah, they were failing uh, on some weekly basis or something like that. And yeah, we had something, some system tests like that in before, 
and when it when we stopped to maintain it they were just simply removed as Jakub mentioned after a few months so the question is if it will be really used and if they will be really maintained and if it did, then makes sense to have them i don't know if other folks from the qe part have something to this but that's... yeah in 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 the past months i think i worked on testing for improvement and i kind of realized that performance pipeline are not even able to start because some misconfiguration and it uh, it, uh, it was due to some problems that were present in the repository for several weeks or months and basically nobody didn't care about it same for pipelines in jenkins so i'm a little bit skeptical about uh, uh, some real value of this because until now nobody care about it in scope of release for example so that's that's my point for me Yeah, I don't know. So that there was a proposal about this that was accepted uh, in general about performance tests. Uh, for me, if you don't want it, it's it's, uh, it's good. It's fine. I have my own custom test that I use. Uh, I will use it, of course, because I'm interested to keep uh, the topic of the performance good. Uh, but if you think it's it's just a burden, we can get rid of it. I mean, also, it, I think it will. Yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to mention that it would be great to have also some insight from Marosh. Yeah, of course, of course. And just about the burden, I guess it would not be a burden in case that it will be really used and uh, configurable in some way and maintained properly. Because, as you may know, some of the system tests are also yeah, failing for a while and we, we are just fixing them and, yeah, we need to think about the maintainability and if it makes sense to, uh, yeah, work on it. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that. So uh, you are in control about that. So if you think it, this is difficult to maintain and, and it does not bring any useful uh, data, uh, then I'm fine with your decision. And yeah, maybe we should wait for the Marosh to... Let's yeah, yeah, because he proposed, he proposed that. Uh, we just briefly talk about this and he, he then he, he moved on opening this PR and the proposal also. Okay, so something like this. Yeah, uh, also I would like to let know that Kafka has performance tests uh, and they seem to be useful because sometimes they block PRs because of performance regressions. Okay, so let's discuss it uh, with Marosh also next time. And we will see how we will proceed with the PR and the overall stuff. Okay, uh, the next, next PR is from 
Marco about additional documentation for all the features and how to use the service accounts. Uh, I saw that it's approved from, from Paul and Jakub had some comments which weren't, uh, yeah, maybe included or answered uh, from the last time. So, Mark, we do have uh, some time to incorporate them or what is the way how we will proceed it? Uh, I need to address a thing or two mentioned there. Uh, there are small things. Uh, I'll try to do it today. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, we can merge this then. I mean, Jakub had some ideas um, how to do things uh, slightly more automatic, uh, right, behind the scenes, but without adding facilities for that at this point, I don't see how to do that. It's about simply passing through the path to the file on the disk that would contain the Kubernetes certificate, it's available there. Uh, we just need to pass the location through the config. And the way we handle secrets, um, it doesn't seem to be available right now. I think the main point, Marco, is that you need to incorporate the commands, the other commands which I raised there. Yes. Totally uh, fix the things for which I opened the other issues. Right. You opened another issue for that one. Uh, I'll address this, uh, my project uh, for the namespace um, and the other comments, yes, you suggested. Okay. Okay, so it seems that's everything for the proposals or uh, PRs or issues. And let's move on to the proposals part. I added a few proposals here, uh, which is one from, uh, or two from Jakub. One is about the removal of Mirror Maker 1 support, uh, which is now mostly approved so in case that someone would like to check it please do it and the second one is about uh, deprecation and removal of storage overrides which is also which was also removed by most of the maintainers so please check this out as well and the last one It's about a uh, proposal from, from Shubham about moving data between two JBOT disks. Uh, I think that it's almost approved as well. Yeah, Tom had some comments a few hours ago. So maybe Shubham can uh, have a look at them. And yeah. if someone... Yeah, sorry, Shubham, go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll have a look at this. Thanks. Yeah, thanks a lot. And if someone would like to uh, review it as well, please do it as soon as possible. Thanks. Uh, is there some other proposal someone would like to mention? Or we will move to the issue triage. Okay, seems like not. So let's start with the issue triage. There are multiple of the issues from the last week as well. The first one is about monitoring of custom resources where user, uh, community user suggested uh, some solution to skip state metrics. And here's also one PR uh, for it. Uh, 
from my side looks good that he added uh, the examples to the to the repository but i guess that paulo had some comment around it um i guess it's this one yeah so paulo had some uh, comments around it about the if it should be installed by Helm and uh, some suggestions about the back parts compatibility. So what does other think about it? And maybe Paolo, if you have some other comments to it. Uh, no, I guess that, uh, yeah, this comment stays there. So uh, the idea is okay, so I am uh, okay for 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 this one. Yeah, we should just try to deal with this. But I am in favor of uh, <clears throat> of this issue. I think there are several things we should consider here. Uh, one of them is it, in which, what kind of form. Do we want to have this included? Like, I think now the PR, if I remember it correctly, just add some Helm chart, which isn't really yeah. our primary base of installation. So do we want some installation YAML files or Maybe do we want to have this just documented in the documentation and not at any installation files or or how exactly we want to kind of realize this? And because like this again, leaving aside the Helm chart thing, if we have it in the examples, that means that someone has to test it, someone has to maintain it. Someone has to keep updating it and so on. So I think that's quite a lot of maintenance effort. And then uh, I think the second thing to consider is what does this mean for the cluster operator where we already have these state metrics? Should we deprecate them and remove them later or What's the plan for that? So sorry, Jakub, it's not clear to me. You are against or not then? So you are just raising, uh, just to understand your uh, I'm thoughts. in general for it, but like, yeah, we need to decide how should it be included? What does it mean for the existing metrics and so on? Yeah, for sure. I don't think that the Elm charts will be enough. And uh, yeah, I agree because we already have some uh, metrics exported by the operator. So it means that we should deprecate them somehow. Yeah, like those metrics can be quite painful because yeah, it's hard to track them. It's hard to track the deletions in various forms and so on. So like I would be in favor of deprecating them, removing them and replacing it with this for everything. But like, does that need proposal? Do we also need some better discussion to how this would be included, whether it will be just documentation or or how exactly we include it. It's also going to have an impact on the Grafana dashboard that we have today for these metrics on the operator, right? 
I don't think so. I don't think we have this there in any way. What do you mean? Don't we have the Grafana dashboard with the metrics from the operator? We don't use this metric in the Grafana dashboard. This is the metric about the state of the, the custom resources, not about kind of the, the count of resources or reconciliations and so on. Right, so, yes, right. So it basically doesn't impact it because it's basically not used in the dashboard. Yeah, if I understood it correctly from, from the description and from the tool, it's uh, something more like extension of our currently existing uh, metrics and ways how we show in the, the Grafana dashboards. Back to what we have today in the Grafana, like the count of reconciliation, it means that we are not going to deprecate everything from the cluster operator metrics because, yeah, the reconciliation count and things like that. No, this is only be. this is only about the state. Okay. Yes. Of the custom resources metrics. Mm -hmm. So yeah, as I said, and charts is not enough. We need for sure some documentation. I guess that they will leave us. So we should provide some. Yeah, it will become something like the examples of the matrix that we have today. So it will not be something. that is, uh, yeah, opinionated. It will be a kind of example. Just out of curiosity, would it make sense to, uh, instead of documenting it and having some examples and other stuff, have some kind of blog post where, where we will show how it can be yeah, installed and used? And that way, test it in, that time, so we we'll, don't need to maintain the documentation and the examples. Would it make sense? Yeah, maybe that would be another way uh, showing the integration with these uh, tube state matrix stuff. Maybe we can propose that this way to the user. So what are you proposing that we deprecate the metrics from the cluster operator and have a blog post how to use the cube state metrics. I mean, uh, does it need to be deprecated when it will be as uh, something extra which users can use? Just a question, I don't, I'm not the expert, so. <laughs> I think It would be good to deal with the inconsistency we have in the metrics. And removing them from the cluster operator is one of the ways how to deal with the inconsistency. Okay. The way how to deal with the inconsistency, which basically this PR proposes in a way, is that you can use the cube state metrics tool to bring the user and topic operator metrics on par through this tool. 
but like that seems that seems weird because we have to maintain the metrics in the cluster operator we need to explain that for those other operators you have to do it differently then for those other two operators users need to install some third party tool so it's okay that's weird on it right i think it might have some value to have consistent metrics from all the operators yeah that makes sense but having it deprecated or and then removed and having the blog post is i guess not enough or so we are going back to the option one or two. I think blog post is fine for some detailed write-up. Mm -hmm. You can also see it as a documentation. You simply mentioned that if you want to get the state, you should use the deep state metrics tool and link to that in the documentation. Like that's also a way how you have it covered in documentation. I I guess it's up to us to decide what's the right way, which is maintainable, but also in some way helpful. So from the test perspective, we have few tests, if I remember correctly, about some of these metrics. So in case that we will decide to move to the cube state metrics, we can simply just replace it in the tests and it will be covered from that part. Do you really have test testing these metrics? I'm not sure, but I think that we had some some like these, at least from what I saw, saw in the comments, there were some things uh, around the Kafka topics and Seyaku Stayskal had some issues in the past with that metric, if I remember but correctly. We don't produce this metric for Kafka topics. That's one part of okay. the issue. Okay. So I don't know, we should maybe have some uh, kind of proposal in either way. And then we can decide if we will go with option one or two or three with the blog post. What do you think? I think Proposal is fine way to approve something, but you need to have some clarity what you want to have in the proposal first. Like you don't want to ask someone to write a proposal and then not know what to do with the proposal as we don't know what to do with it right now. So for sure, uh, as Paolo mentioned, we need to check a different uh, way how to deploy the keep state metrics, not just using by using the Helm charts as the first thing. Or I don't know. I'm completely fine with that. I don't see it as a problem from user point of view.
So anyway, what's worrying me is that in three weeks, uh, the user didn't come back to the comments on the PR. So I'm even not sure he's interested to... Because we have the issue, Paolo. The PR is just an example of how you can address the issue. That's pretty much how it was meant. So should I move all my comments from the PR to the issue? On the other side, if we are raising all these issues, maybe it's not worth having it, at least my feeling, because we are talking about issues with uh, with tests, with maintaining, and who is going to maintain, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So if we see all these issues, then maybe we have just the gut feeling that it's not going the right direction in terms of load. I'm not sure what do you mean by that, Paolo? No, it seems to me that uh, there are no maintainers to be, yeah, great, we want to have this. We are raising all different kind of problems, like that are, of course, good questions so, about maintainability, deployment, et cetera, et cetera. So to be clear for myself, Testing. I think moving to the cube state metrics makes a lot of sense to me. I'm not sure how much I would probably say that we should just deprecate the metrics we have and point in the documentation to the cube state metrics as something what you can use. And maybe the blog post is a nice idea how to show some examples without having to maintain them. But I think if you look at the examples in the metric examples, then uh, historically there are several things. The Grafana dashboards, they are fine. They are just JSONs with the Grafana dashboards, right? Then you have all the Streamsy custom resource YAMLs with the metrics examples. They are also fine. Right. And then you have the things like the Grafana deployment demo. When was the last time someone actually used it and tried it? Does it still work? It was working like two months ago. But yeah, good point. Like we, lit we actually updated it in the zero for the one release where I don't know what exactly we changed there. We actually updated the version, but before we updated it in 2021, I think the same applies for all the various Prometheus things. The port monitors, they are probably useful, but when someone comes up asking about how to use these various things, how to use these additional scrape configs and so on, I think we are not really able to provide the help because we don't really understand it. So the question for me is, do we really want to add there yet another installation with some configuration for the cube state metrics? I'm not so sure about that because uh, I'm not really sure how these files are really managed apart from the dashboards and the YAML examples. For this reason, it looks to me that having just a blog post 
is better than uh, including something like this in the code base. Yeah, well, that, that was the idea to deprecate uh, those metrics, having some kind of information about the cube state metrics in the documentation and in the blog post cover some idea of the examples without really maintaining them. At least that's how I uh, understood it. So. But what are you going to put in the documentation? Because so for me, uh, when you add something to documentation, then I don't know, you have something in the code base uh, documenting that, or at least uh, you are giving a feeling of uh, support for what you are documenting. Well, I, not. I think if you add to the documentation that additional metrics covering the state of the individual custom resources can be obtained using the Kubernetes or using the cube state metrics tool and you link to the cube state metrics tool repo. I don't think that necessarily guarantees any support, but it points the users who don't know about it into the right direction. Yeah, but still you have to have the examples in your code base, right? Otherwise, mm, what you're talking no. about in the documentation. Why? So you are, I don't know, just showing some snippets in the documentation, this is what you mean? No, I would have there just this single sentence as I mentioned it. So that you can uh, export uh, the, the different various custom resource state using the cube state metrics and this is the link. Yeah. With no examples about uh, what you mean by the status, which kind of information from the status. I don't know how much value I see it has in the doc. I, I don't know. Does it have some nice way how to share some examples? For this reason, I was saying maybe just an example in the doc, not in the code base, but at least in the doc. Like, I don't know what the Helm chart generates. Does it generate some custom resources or does it generate some config map or? Oh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if it generates some custom resource, then we can probably easily say that this is the custom resource you can use. And for the installation, go to the origin, to the cube state metrics repo. So maybe we should try that out and see what it actually generates and then, um, yeah, discuss it a bit more when we have more information. Because for me, at least it would make sense to have the one uh, or two sentences as Jakub mentioned, and then the blog post with some simple example. Pointing to also to the documentation of the cube state metrics too. Because I don't even know how many users are checking these metrics or I don't know nobody knows. Something. We don't have a way to find out. Yeah. But I guess you need to be more specific when you say we should check it out. I can check it out. <laughs> the point is, um, so I see Elm charts as a tool, right? And not all people use tools. So for me, you should check it out how it works without Elm chart. 
and understand yeah how this cube state metrics work when you are not using an chart so that you know the the basics right you know the core how it works without an charts and then and charts is a kind of tool on top of it in order to simplify the deployment of this stuff but if we need something like i don't know some sentence in the documentation or uh, some snippet uh, some example it should be the basic usage of this state matrix stuff i don't think that we have elm charts examples in the in the doc or If I remember correctly, Helm chart client also allows you to generate all YAML files and then just do a simple OC apply or kubectl apply. Yeah, if that's a way to understand how this Kafka state metrics work is okay. Otherwise, we should just go to the documentation of Kafka state metrics where I think I think they have explained. installation YAMLs on in their GitHub repo. So they don't have just Helm chart, I think. But that doesn't necessarily address the question of what exactly you want to include, right? Regarding the, the installation, I say, as you say, just a link to the repo. So if you want to install the Cube State Metrics, this is the link, goes there, use the way you want, Elm charts, not Elm charts, and so on. Maybe we can get, uh, so we have two problems. Installation, okay, let's point to the kubestate matrix uh, repo. Or the other one is, uh, but uh, how, how I can get this metric, this specific metric from this uh, stream with the custom resource using this yeah, one. The and problem, then the, the problem, example. Paolo, is that unless it's operator based or uh, unless it's using some CRD to configure, then the example you are asking for and the installation are one and the same thing, right? Uh, yes, in sense that the example will be a custom resource provided by the cube state matrix operator. Yeah, but that assumes there is a custom resource. If there isn't a custom resource, then it's we... part of the installation because you configure it in the configuration of the of the application yeah so i was clicking uh lukash if you go on the on the issue that was closed uh issue 9802 Okay, at some point there is one of my comments. There should be a link to the doc seems to be pretty straightforward uh, about how you expose. Uh, yeah, a little bit. No, 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 uh, just, yeah, exactly. Oh, okay, it doesn't work. Great. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, because I, I remember that I was taking a look at uh, how you are exposing metrics for custom resources. And now there is no documentation anymore. So what I mean, we should try to understand how this kubestat metrics works in terms of exposing metrics for a custom resource. And then we know, or we can have a better understanding of what we should include or not. But I also don't see custom resource in this list. Yeah, I guess it needs more investigation before proceeding. It's oh, at if the you bottom scroll of down, the page, Lukash. yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. If you scroll down at the bottom, yeah, it yeah. pretty much on... shows what I said, basically, right? And it's also say it's experimental support.
So here you ah. can see the Paolo. There's no custom resource to monitor the custom resources. It's all in deployment. So it's yeah. there's no there's no example. It's either the installation files or nothing basically. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know that was that way. Uh, I was thinking. Or okay, the Helm chart, something. which kind of abstracts it in some way and generated these things, obviously, but. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, need, I think that we need more investigation and maybe uh, discuss it at next time. What do you think? Because we are running out of time soon. So you're going to investigate it, Lukash? Yeah, I can have a look at it. Maybe you should then at least update the issues that it was discussed and what the outcome was. Yeah, I'm doing it right away. Lugash, if you are typing something, I can't see on the screen. What do you see? <laughs> I'm at the at the issue, so let's meet. Can you see something? Yes, a little bit. Yeah, it's not about zoom. Lukash, it's about I... the, the position. I don't think you have to cover there the whole discussion because that's what's recorded. I think you should update there that you are going to look into that closer and we get back to it next time. like this yeah I think that looks good okay so uh, we run out of times is there anything else at the end of the call that someone would like to raise Okay, it seems not. So thank you everyone for joining the call and uh, see you in two weeks. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.